2017 was a major year for Vodafone, both in terms of their network evolution as well as their marketing strategy, both in terms of the UK as well as group-wise, as they progressed from the somewhat legendary power to you slogan to the new the future is exciting ready slogan as in the previous mobile network operator 2017 end of year roundup videos that i've made i shall be focusing exclusively on the mobile network side of the operator and not its brand and marketing because i'm sure there'll be someone far more qualified to talk about that aspect of it than me the first network upgrade that I shall talk about is refarming, which all of the mobile network operators have been up to during the course of the year. In Vodafone's case, it has involved increasing their 2100 MHz refarm from typically producing a 10 MHz per 4G carrier to refarming the entire 2100 MHz band over to 4G, producing a 15 MHz paired carrier of EARFCN323. Now this fully refarmed 2100 MHz is present in, in a number of UK cities. First ones that come to mind are Birmingham and Manchester, although it is present in some other locations as well. There is also 4G 2100 MHz operating in numerous locations in the country at bandwidths of 5 MHz or 10 MHz, which during the course of 2018 will get widened to the full 15 MHz paired of 4G at 2100 MHz. Additionally, areas in the east are already showing signs of being readied to get 2100 MHz refarmed to 4G, such as the appearance of the second 3G carrier at UARFCN 2987, which is a prerequisite for the refarm of 2100 MHz from 3G to 4G. So during the course of 2018, I am very much expecting the footprint of the 2100 MHz 4G to expand to not only cover more places in the Vodafone hosted west of the country, but also to cover the high load areas in the east of the country which are in the O2 hosted zone. Vodafone have also been deploying refarmed 1800 MHz around the place and Vodafone does not own that much 1800 MHz, it's only 5.8 MHz paired of which they operate a 5 MHz paired carrier as 4G whose EARFCN is 1288. This is present in a few urban locations like London, Bristol and Glasgow as well as in the O2 hosted area of Brighton. The screenshot I have used to illustrate the fully refarmed 2100 MHz in operation for 4G also displays four antennas for transmit on the Enode B side of things, i.e. the mast that was providing this fully refarmed 2100 MHz 4G had 44R capabilities, so it was using four transmit and four receive antennas, which provides a good continuity path for moving on to the next slide. 44R has been deployed on the Vodafone network far more widely than I probably expected it to, with it being present on a huge number of sites in central London, as well as in other locations like Manchester and Birmingham. In fact, 44R is present across all of Vodafone's vendor zones, so the Huawei region, the Ericsson one, and also the Nokia zone. The left screenshot and image shows a Nokia 44R 2600 MHz site in Reading. Meanwhile, the right image shows an Ericsson RRUS32, which is a 44R 2600 MHz remote radio unit in the London zone. 
However, 44R is not only deployed on the 2600 MHz band, it is also seen on 2100 MHz, the refarmed 4G that I spoke about earlier, although this is mainly concentrated in the ultra-urban parts of London, or at least that's the only place that I have seen it up to this point. 256 QAM downlink and 64 QAM uplink are also technologies which Vodafone has deployed on large segments of their network. Specifically, I've seen the 256 QAM downlink and 64 QAM uplink on sites in the Ericsson and Huawei zones so far, specifically in combination with the gains from deploying 44R and having a handset which can take advantage of 44R alongside 256 gram downlink and 64 gram uplink, Vodafone has achieved some sterling speeds in central London using the Sony XZ Premium which can use 44R on multiple carriers as well as 256 gram downlink and 64 gram uplink. Vodafone hasn't just deployed 44R MIMO publicly either. They have a number of installations of massive MIMO. The first of which at their Newbury headquarters where they managed to achieve aggregate throughput of 500 to 600 megabits per second from the single panel which is a huge amount of capacity from a single TDD 20 megahertz carrier on 2600 megahertz. At Goodwood in the summer, there were also a number of massive MIMO antennas installed and Bristol very recently got one installed in the city center. Vodafone have also done a 3.5 gigahertz standalone pre-standard 5G trial in conjunction with Ericsson and King's College London where technologies like Massive MIMO have also been tested. In the vicinity of King's College London there have been a number of other upgrades that Vodafone has performed. I will first start off by talking about distributed antenna systems that have been installed in a number of train stations such as Euston, Victoria, Paddington, Waterloo and not particularly in London but also Reading. As train stations are typically built of stone and materials that are not particularly great for signal penetration, the signal at the best of times in train stations is rather weak and this is really not a good situation to be in when you consider that they tend to have a very high density of users especially at certain times of day. And the last thing that you want is tons of users at the cell edge in poor signal conditions because even in perfect conditions they'll sap a huge amount of capacity let alone when they're in the cell edge. So the solution is to install a distributed antenna system within the train station so that then the users get a optimally located cell for serving the inside of the train station so that they, they get a strong signal and there's lots of capacity there which is good for obviously the capacity for the users of the train station inside but it also means that the macro cells outside are not overloaded trying to keep extremely poor signal condition users inside the train station connected. Now these come in a variety of different frequency configurations with Victoria, as far as I know, being the most highly specified, which is how you can get speed tests like the one on this slide at Victoria Station using 800 MHz, 2100 MHz and 2600 MHz in triple carrier aggregation. The rooftop site on Vodafone's Smail House office has also recently become home to a live deployment of supplementary downlink band 32. This spectrum is mid-band around 1500 MHz and can only operate when aggregated to a carrier which has uplink capability. So that's why in this screenshot the 
Band 32 is the secondary carrier to the 800 MHz 4G. The supplementary downlink is really, really great spectrum though. It's 20 MHz of download bandwidth, which of course is a lot of downlink spectrum. That's the downlink spectrum of their 2600 MHz carrier. But unlike the 2600 MHz, the range of the 1500 MHz is very much greater. And not only is it much greater in the downlink direction, but because its uplink will be on most likely 800 MHz, it then gets the uplink link budget effectively of 800 MHz instead of where the 2600 MHz, where you're highly constrained in the downlink direction, but also highly constrained in the uplink direction in order to get that 20 MHz of downlink capacity. So the 1500 MHz band 32 supplementary downlink is absolutely wonderful spectrum however it has one massive problem at the moment and that's that device support is dire like major flagship devices that make up significant market penetration at the moment do not support supplementary downlink and clearly you can't deploy spectrum if practically no one has devices that can take advantage of it because you'd be better off spending the money deploying technologies which a significant proportion of your user base can take advantage of. Fortunately, a number of European networks as well have started to deploy supplementary downlink, so hopefully in time that will then kick the device manufacturers into supporting it more. The final thing that I will talk about with regards to London is the Beacon Unwind where, like I described in the O2 video, Vodafone is deploying their own sites in North London with their own equipment and their own technologies as they please. Also in London, Vodafone and Ericsson announced a deal where Ericsson would be Vodafone's radio access network vendor for London, modernising their London network, which is why when I displayed the 44R 2600 MHz, that that nice shiny RIUS32 Ericsson remote radio unit uh, was shown and they are present on absolutely tons of sites in central London because like I say the 44R is very common and with Ericsson equipment being used then that's very much as you would expect. Way outside of London in Porth Kerno, which is in Cornwall, Vodafone also have deployed a piece of new mast technology that they have developed, which they call the Mini Macro Mast, which is kind of just an ultra compact version of Streetwork sites. They can carry everything from just sort of low band 800 MHz and 900 MHz all the way up to 44R on 2100 MHz and 2600 MHz, dependent on whether it's coverage or capacity that's required. They can even have a sort of hybrid version which has say 4G 2100 MHz as well as 3G 900 MHz and 4G 800 MHz for areas where a mixture of high band and low band is beneficial. The final development that I will talk about in this video is voice over LTE or calling over 4G which they now support on a fairly limited range of handsets and the coverage of the voice over LTE is not nationwide as of yet. However, both will hopefully be expanding significantly in 2018. So thanks for watching this video about Vodafone's developments in the year 2017 and I hope you've enjoyed the videos about the other mobile network operators and what they got up to as well. These videos have taken a significant amount of time to produce, so hopefully I will be able to get back to a range of other content now that I have finished making these.